My first time to taste Otto, which is, um, it's dried yogurt, is that right? Dried yogurt. So I'm a little worried that it's going to be extraordinarily sour and really hard, but hey. Oh yeah, it's hard. Oh yeah, oh yikes. That <laughs> thing is so hard. <laughs> This is, this is the auto. It's, it's dry. It's dry yogurt. Here's what you do. You apparently put it in your mouth. Oh, God. It's like a rock. I don't know how you eat this thing. I'm going to have... I'm gonna have zero teeth and one piece of auto left. That's what I can end up with. It tastes pretty good though. <laughs> 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 I've never had anything quite like this before. <laughs> Nothing's <laughs> happening. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's auto. <laughs> So here are two types of auto. One of them is a little bit sweet and kind of crumbly, and then the other one is the rock hard dry one. Now, after, and I do stress this, after it softens up a bit in your mouth, the rock hard dry one is pretty darn good. I really enjoy it. The sweet one, well, it's nice, but it's not as unique. It's not as, it's not giving me that, you know, I'm in Mongolia and I'm eating a traditional preserved food feeling, whereas the dry one is. Let's take a little closer look at this delicacy and traditional food preservation technique from Mongolia called Ado. This is made from milk and it is a food preservation technique that is used to take milk, which is very easily rotted, and compact it into a substance that can be carried a long distance that will not rot when it's in the summertime and you're, for instance, on a long trip moving from your summer to your winter home in Mongolia, or you're just off herding sheep or something and you need to have a light, highly nutrient-dense food that won't go bad. And that's this right there. Ancient humans, pretty amazing bunch of people. They didn't understand the science behind what was happening, but they were able to figure it out through trial and error. Pretty darn genius of them. Got to give our hats off to them. Okay, let's take a look at some other food preservation techniques first before we talk about what's happening in the auto. First, tea. You heat it and you dry it. That makes it shelf stable. This tea is not going to rot because it's dry and it's been heated. The heating step kills any microorganisms on the surface of the tea leaves. And remember, every plant like this one, all of them have microorganisms growing on them, yeast or bacteria, viruses or something. So you kill it and then you dry it so it becomes shelf stable. This can last for, for years. The next one we're looking at is a really cool little tea snack that is traditional in South Korea. And it is made from, surprise, surprise, pine tree pollen. Who gathers all that stuff? Man, that must be difficult. So you press it into this little tea snack that says tea, by the way. Again, shelf stable due to it being very dry. But now we come to the third one. This is burdock root. And this stuff is definitely not dry. So why isn't it rotting? Because people have figured out another way to do things. And that is you don't have to make it totally dry. You can also add things that will tie up the water, reduce what's called the water activity level. That means the free water that's available for microorganisms to grow. You reduce it down enough that they won't grow. In this case, it's sugar that's been added. So it's been candied. That sugar molecules are tying up the water. So there's so much sugar in here that the bacteria and the viruses can't use that water to grow. So again, 
shelf stable, which means room temperature stable or ambient temperature stable. That's not going to rot. Now let's take a look at something that's ridiculously healthy, which eh, under some circumstances could be considered shelf stable, but this particular one right now is not. There's a lot of water in there. There's not that much salt, not that much hot peppers in here, not enough to inhibit bacterial growth at room temperature. But if you do this in the fall, then you put it into a big urn inside the ground and you leave it there all winter long to sustain you during the cold winters in Korea, you're set. Not only do you have these fresh vegetables, but you get the probiotics and the prebiotics. Probiotics are the living microorganisms on there that are really good for your gut health. Prebiotics are the molecules that those living organisms make in order to sustain their lives and as byproducts, but they're good for the microorganisms, the other microorganisms that are growing in your gut. So that's why they're called prebiotics. Now, if you heat this and cook this, you'll kill your probiotics, but your prebiotics will still be there. So you'll still get a lot of health benefit. Okay, what's happening with Otto? Back to the main crux of this video. What's going on here? It's dry and it's sour and it's also been heated. So it employs three techniques. And that's what makes this bulletproof food preservation. This is just awesome. Number one, it is fermented fermented like kimchi fermented just like the kimchi that lowers the ph low ph kills a lot of harmful microorganisms and stops their growth number two after it's fermented number two step is it is heated it is heated to the point where it's boiled and that kills all the microorganisms so it's you starting off with a clean slate you've got nothing in there except for the prebiotics the milk products which are going to provide the nutrients for you while you're on your long journey or sitting in your gear which is that little traditional mongolian house in the winter time and it's minus 40 degrees outside fahrenheit centigrade who cares that's so friggin cold and you need to sustain yourself it's not going to rot Number three, after they do all that, then it is dried. Dry is another way to reduce the water activity level to the point where it's shelf stable or room temperature stable, whatever you'd like to call it. That's why this is such genius. It is a three-pronged attack to absolutely positively ensure this isn't going to rot. Now, one little concept I do want to explain in a little bit more detail, that is water activity. So, what is water activity? There's actually two types of water in living things. One is free water. That's the water just cruising around. This is water, by the way. Probably heard it before. H2, there's two H's and an O. So free water is water that's just cruising around anywhere in the cell or in the tissues. And it's bumping into other waters. That's the important part of free water. It's touching other waters. Now, bound water is not touching other waters. It's it's locked into place in big molecules inside of the plants or the animals or something. So let's take a look at a big molecule. This is a protein. Yeah, yeah, I know it's ugly, but just bear with me. Here is a water in this protein. And here's a little bit of a, another part of the protein that is doing a hydrogen bond, which is kind of a thing that's holding this water in place. And this water being locked inside here in this protein is not available to be used by microorganisms to grow. It's called bound water. You don't count this when you're thinking about how much water is in there. And that's the genius of this particular one and sweet auto, also when they add sugar to it, is because by adding salt or sugar to something, you are taking this free water here and you're binding it up. It goes from being free water to being bound water. So here you've got, let's say, you've got a little salt here. Let's say, okay, we'll just use a little chloride. Chloride is minus sodium chloride. Here's salt. Sodium is plus, that's minus. So here you've got a water molecule here. And water's kind of strange in that it's a little bit negative here and it's a little bit positive here. So this positive and this negative are attracting each other. This negative and this positive are attracting each other. And this 
water molecule is no longer available to be used by microorganisms for propagation. So therefore, this mimics this. That's genius. Now, a lot of ancient people didn't understand this, but by trial and error, they figured it out and they were able to make things that were shelf stable. That's why this is such a fascinating treat. Not only is it really good and ridiculously hard, but it's so cool because they do a three-pronged approach to ensure that absolutely positively this thing's not going to rot.